I really do appreciate all my new subscribers and my day ones. Thank you. Hey, you all. Welcome to Religion Wink TV, where my spiritual ears stay. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the 40th episode of this edition of The Morning Read, guys. We've been doing this 40 days straight, right? And, you know, we started doing this because we know people get up to read people for filth. And we like to get up and read people to life, right? So on March 2nd, 2019... Religion Wing TV started reading the Bible aloud, you know, trying to feed the sheep, encourage the masses, and speak to the lost soul. Because we understand, disclaimer, that there's some people who cannot physically see to read the Bible. There's some people who cannot literally read to comprehend and understand the Bible. And then there's some people who are just church hurt and abused by people in church, mad at God for whatever reason. And they walked away from the Word of God. So it's important for us to encourage, edify, uplift, uh, exhort, and comfort one another in the admonition of the Lord, right? Just have a good heart for people. Share the Word of God because the Bible says the love of God is shed abroad in our heart. So why can't we shed it abroad hoping that it connects? with other people's hearts and they receive them right because christ says let those who open up and let me in i will sup with them and they will sup with me that's a beautiful thing people i don't know about you but i love breaking bread with the most high god because he gives me my daily bread so who better to break bread with now, I know some of you out there still like to break bread with the enemy because you're caught up in the things of the world. But I'm telling you, that shoe bread, that spiritual bread that comes from heaven is a beautiful thing. Remember, man can't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out the mouth of God, right? So we're going to get into the second book of Samuel, chapter 1 and 2. This is Religion Wing TV, and my spiritual ears stay. Alright, we're trying something new this way. Hopefully it goes through. We have two short chapters to get through in the book of Samuel. A backdrop, Samuel was prophesied to be, you know... Uh, a man of God by his mother Hannah who could not have any children. The whole book of Samuel takes you through King David elect and King Saul having beef. Them fighting with the Philistines. Um, uh, you know, there's a character named Nabal. Something crazy happened to him. There's Saul going to the woman of Endor who uh, raised Samuel from the dead actually. So Saul can have this conversation and Samuel said, this time tomorrow you and your sons will be with me, which was dead, which was gone, which was expired, right? And that came to pass. And then we are just going into the second book of Samuel where the first book of Samuel told us that um, the, this was one book in the Hebrew Bible. And I told y'all yesterday, let's find that Hebrew Bible and you'll find your truth, Christians, right? And this is a segue into that Hebrew Bible, but you have to study to show yourself approved unto God and not unto man, not being a work a workman, a workhorse, a a, a a idiot in front of people, have you will, right? That you know you you know the word of God and you became a child of God because you wanted to represent God and not just what church has to offer on a materialistic level. So with that being said, this is the continuation. Let's go ahead and see. The book of 2 Samuel records the highlights of David's reign. First over the territory of Judah and finally over the entire nation of Israel. It traces to the ascension of David to the throne, his climatic sins of adultery and murder, and the shattering consequences of those sins upon his family and the nation so let's get right into second samuel chapter 1 verse 1 now it came to pass 
after the death of Saul, and David was returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites. And David had a bowl two days in Ziglag. Two, and it even came to pass on the third day that, behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul with his clothes rent, and earth was upon his head. And so it was when he came to David that he fell to the earth and did obey. Obeisance, it says. It says here that he prostrated himself. For, and David said unto him, From whence cometh thou? And he said unto him, Out of the camp of Israel, and I am escaped. For, and David said unto him, How went that matter? I pray thee, tell me. And he answered that the people are fled from the battle, and many of the people are fallen and dead. And Saul and Jonathan his son are dead also. 5. And David said unto the young man that told him, How knowest, excuse me, How knowest that the Saul and Jonathan his son be dead? 6. And the young man that told him said, As I happened by chance upon Mount Gilboa, behold, Saul leaned upon his spear, and lo, the chariots and horsemen followed hard after him. Now I explained to you that somehow Saul got punctured by the archers, wounded, right? But then he didn't want the Philistines to come along and finish him off. So basically yesterday I said, is this a form of suicide? That he will fall upon his own sword and take his own life. He may have succumbed to his injuries, but he may have lived. The Phil he may have gotten away from the Philistines. We never know, right? But let me know down below if you think this is an early form of suicide here. Saul taking his own life after he was wounded by the Philistines, but it didn't say to what degree. So use your perception here, people, and understand what, what, what thus saith the Lord. Oh, don't forget your Bibles and your teacups. <laughs> I am having a little coffee this morning. I hope and pray all is well. God bless you to everyone that shows up. This is going to be a morning premiere. It's about 7.50 East Coast time here in the U.S. in the States. So guys, join us for this morning read. Alright, so it goes on to say, 6. And the young man that told him said, As I happened by chance upon Mount Gilboa, Behold, Saul leaned upon his spear, and lo, the chariots and horsemen followed hard after him. 7. And when he looked behind him, he saw me, and called unto me, and I answered, Here I am. 8. And he said unto me, Who art thou? And I said, I am an Amalekite. 9. He said unto me again, Stand, I pray thee, upon me, and slay me. For anguish has come upon me, because my life is yet whole, whole in me. 10. So I stood upon him and slew him, because I was sure that he could not live after that he was fallen. And I took the crown that was upon his head, and the bracelet that was on his arm, and have brought them hither unto my Lord. So, okay, it wasn't quite suicide, all right? He fell on his own sword and still had not died. And then this Amalekite came along and helped finish him off. 11. Then David took hold on his clothes and rent them. And likewise, all the men that were with him. And they mourned in verse 12. And wept and fasted until evening for Saul and for Jonathan his son and for the people of the Lord and for the house of Israel because they were fallen upon the sword. 13. And David said unto the young man that told him, Whence art thou? And he answered, I am the son of a stranger and an Amalekite. 14. And David said unto him, How was thou not afraid to stretch forth thine hand? and to destroy the Lord's anointed. 15. And David called one of the young men and said, Go near and fall upon him. And he smote him that died. 16. And David said unto him, Thy blood be upon thine head, for thy mouth has testified against thee, saying, I have slain the Lord's anointed. So David is still trying to tell the man here, You know what? 
regardless of King Saul, he tried to kill me all the days of my life. He still was the Lord's anointing. And blood is upon your head now. 17. And David lamented with, with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan his son. 18. Also he bade them to teach the children of Judah the use of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Jasher. In the book of what? I've been telling you the book of Jasher, Jubilee, Enoch, uh, the Apocrypha, the Maccabees, the Ezra's, the son of Sirach. There's more to your truth out there than these people will lead on and have you believe, right? Look up the book of Jasher and read about it. 19. The beauty of Israel is slain upon the high places. How are the mighty fallen? 20. And we have to go down to verse 27 in the chapter 1. Tell it to the Gath, publish it not in the streets of the Akalon, lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. 21. Yet mountains of Gilboa, um, let there be no dew, neither let there be rain upon you, nor fields of offerings. For there the shield of the mighty is vilely cast away. The shield of Saul, as though he had not even been anointed with oil. Verse 22. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan turned not back, and the sword of Saul returned not empty. 23. Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their lives, and in their death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. 24. Ye daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet with other delights, who put on ornaments of gold upon your apparel. 25. Who are the mighty fallen in the midst of the battle? O Jonathan, thou wast slain in thine high places. 26. I am distressed for thee. My brother Jonathan, very pleasant hast thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful, passing the love of a woman. Now this may be where people of the cold dick and black gay men want to say Jonathan and David had a sexual relationship. And um, I told you in one account they were kissing and his love was for him. His respect for him was so dear. So, you know, guys, I told you in the book of... Matthew nineteen twenty two. it talks about the eunuch, which I believe are the gays today. Please go over there and read that. Now, it says that his love passing the love of a woman. And we know David loved him some women. He was married. He had, you know, two or three wives there. We know at least had two. He had Milka, Saul's daughter. And then he had Abigail, the Carmelite, the do uh, wife of Nabal, right? So the last verse in verse chapter 1 goes on to say, How are the mighty fallen and the weapons of war perish? That's a good question. How have the mighty people of the world fallen and the weapons of war perish? Good question, people. So we're 13, 14 minutes into the read. God bless. Yes, we are doing good. We only have 32 verses to go. So let's go ahead and be led by the Holy Spirit into chapter 2, verse 1. This is Religion Wing TV and my spiritual ears stay. Alright, verse 1. And it came to pass after this that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up into, shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said unto him, Go up. And David said, Whither shall I go up? And he said, Unto Hebron. Get thee up to Hebron, David. Right? That's what I'm saying. You Davids, get up to Hebron. Verse 2. So David went up tither, and his two wives also, Enahinaab, the Jezreelite, and Abigail, Nabal's wife, the Carmelite. That's right. Micah. Saul tricked David and gave him to one of his countrymen, his brethren, I believe. Um, so his wife is uh, in a hen, in a hen, a am, 
the Jezreelites and the Baal's wife, Carmelite. So I was right on one account. Abigail is his wife, and Ahimaam is his wife. Michael was supposed to be his wife, the daughter of Saul, but you have to go back and read that. Check out the playlist, you all. Um, it's called the Morning Read Playlist, and you'll get every last playlist, every last video from March 2nd, okay? So it goes on to say, three, and as men that were with him, David, bring up every man with his household, and they dwelt in the cities of Hebron. Four, and the men of Judah came, and there they anointed King David over the house of Judah. And they told David, saying, that the men of Jashbia Gilead were that they buried Saul. Five, and David sent messengers unto the men of Jashbia Gilead, and said unto them, Blessed be ye of the Lord, that you have shewed this kindness unto your Lord, even unto Saul, and have buried him. Six. And now the Lord shew kindness and truth unto you, and I also requite you with this kindness, because you have done this thing. See, you know, pay kindness back with kindness, people. It's one thing you try to pay evil with evil, but when you begin to pay kindness back with kindness, you get a little bit further in life. So, it goes on to say, 7, Therefore now let your hands be strengthened, and be ye valiant, for your master Saul is dead. And also the house of Judah had a, have anointed me king over them. He was the king of Judah. Judah would not have put an enemy over his tribe. Judah would have selected one of a Hebrew Israelite, King David, to reign over him. Now, the people chose Saul. But when God sent Samuel to tell Jesse that his youngest son David was going to be the king elect, that is a prophecy that came to pass. And remember, Jesse is of the house of Judah through Judah's son, Perez. Go back to Ruth, chapter 4, the generations of Boaz, I believe. And it starts with Judah's son, Phares, beget Nashon, Nashon beget Salmon, Salmon beget Boaz, Boaz beget Obed, Obed beget Jesse, Jesse beget David, and David beget Solomon, on down to where you have Joseph, you know, and Mary, and they said the Christ sprang out of the tribe of Judah. So let's go ahead and finish reading. So now... We have verse 20. Oh, no, 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 no. Excuse me. We over here on verse 4. Excuse me. And the men of Judah came, and there were anointed King David over the house of Judah. And they told David, saying, that the men of Jezreel Gilead were, that, that they were buried, that they buried Saul. Excuse me, 5. I read this. And David sent messengers unto the men of Jezreel Gilead, and said unto them, Blessed be ye of the Lord, that you have shewed the kindness unto your Lord, even unto Saul, and have buried him. Six, and now the Lord shew kindness unto you, the truth unto you, and I also requite you this kindness, because you have done this thing. Seven, therefore now let your hands be strengthened, and ye be valiant, for your master Saul is dead, and also the house of Judah have anointed me king over them. Hey, and that anointing comes from God by Samuel. At, but Abner, the son of Ner, captain of Saul's host, took Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and brought him over to Man Mahana, Mahanahim. 9. And made him king over Gilead, and over the Asherites, and over Jezreel, and over Ephraim, and over Benjamin, and all of Israel. 10. Ishbosheth, Saul's son, was forty years old when he began to reign over Israel, and reigned two years. But the house of Judah followed David. Eleven, and the time that David was king. Now this is a split between the children of Israel. Eleven, 
In the time that David was king in, the, in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. Twelve. And Abner the son of Ner, the servants of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, went out from Mahanaim to Gibeon. Thirteen. And Joab the son of Zoriah, Zeruiah, Zeruiah, and the servants of David went out and met together by the pool of Gibeon, and they sat down, the one on the one side of the pool and the other on the other side of the pool. It's funny, right? It's like always a valley between them. Saul was on one side of the mountain, David on the other side of the mountain. Jonathan was on one side of the mountain. The Philistines was on the other side of the mountain. And now you have these two camps. One on one side of the pool. One on the other side. And, and in those days, people were very fit, uh, finicky about getting up in people's space. Because even in the New Testament, God says, don't be quick to let people lay hands on you. Even then, with the sorceries and the wizardry, people were passing on these evil demonic spirits and things like that guys so just be careful so verse 14 and Abner said to Joab let the young men now arise and play before us and Joab said let them arise get up and play people have some fun right 15 and there arose and went out by number 12 of Benjamin which pertained to Ishbosheth. Ish the son of Saul, and twelve of the servants of David. Sixteen, and we have thirty-two to go to, verse thirty-two. So that means we have sixteen chapters to go, and we are twenty-two minutes into the read. Thank God, right? Seventeen, sixteen, and there caught everyone his fellow by the head, and thrust his sword in his fellow's side. So they fell down together, wherefore the place was called Hel Kaka Zurim, which is in Gibeon. 17. And there was a very sore battle that day, and Abner was beaten, and the men of Israel before the servants of David. 18. And there were three sons of Zuruiah, there Joab, and Abiashel, and Asihel. And Asihel was as light of foot as a wild roe. 19. And Asihel pursued after Abner. And going in, he turned not to the right hand nor to the left from following Abner. 20. Then Abner looked behind him and said, Art thou Asihel? And he answered, I am. 21. And Abner said to him, Turn thee aside to the right hand. Or to thy left, and lay thee hold one of the young men, and take thee his armor. But Asihel will not turn aside from following him. We will begin to read verse 22. All right. And Abner said again to Asihel, Turn thee aside from following me. Wherefore, I, wherefore should I smite thee to the ground? How then... Should I hold up my face to Joab, thy brother? How would I be able to explain to my brother I had to smite his son, Asiel? 23. How be it he refused to turn aside, wherefore Abner with the hinder, end of his smear, smote him under the fifth rib, that the spear came out behind him. And he fell down there, and died in the same place. And it came to pass that as many as came to the place where Asiel fell down and died stood still. 24, and we have eight to go. Eight verses to go. Joab also and Abishai pursued after Abner. And the sun went down when they were come to the hill of Amah, that lieth before Gaia by the way of the wilderness of Gibeon. And the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together after Abner, and became one troop, and stood on top of a hill. 26. Then Abner called to Joab and said, Shall the sword devour forever? 
Knowest thou not that it will be bitterness in the latter end? How long shall it be then? Art thou bid the people return from the following their brethren? Ain't you going to call your people off from killing your own people? Aren't you going to tell them to turn back? 27. And Joab said, As God liveth, unless thou hast spoken, surely then in the morning the people had gone up, everyone from following his brother. 28. So Joab blew a trumpet, and all the people stood still, and pursued after Israel no more, neither fought they any more. Come on, people, stop fighting, right? Neither fight anymore. You are the children of Israel still fighting today like your ancestors did in this book. 29. And Abner and his men walked all that night through the plain and passed over Jordan and went through all of Bithron, and they came unto Mahananaim. 30. And we have four, three to go. One, two, three. And Joab entered into the following um, of Abner, and when he had gathered all the people together, their lack of David's servant, nineteen men, and Asbael, thirty-one. But the servants of David had smitten of Benjamin and Abner's men, so three hundred and threescore men died. Three hundred and sixty men, guys. One score equal 20 right we said whether it's men whatever you're counting so when you see three score it referenced 20 right one score reference 20 and if it's three it's 60 if it's four it's 80 if it's five it's 100 score like that right so 32 last verse of the morning read you all and we're at 27 minutes and they took up asabel Asahel and buried him in the sepulchre of his father, which was in Bethlehem. And Joab and his men went all night, and they came to Hebron at break of day. And this ends the morning read, guys. When this music goes off, so will the morning read. But let's remember, the word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? This was just information. It wasn't too much to really commentate on here. Let the word of God speak for itself sometimes because it is the word of God. I mean, we can interpret it any way we want. But when God speaks, he speaks. And what we learned today is that the children of Israel fought against one another, killed one another, slain one another, uh, was against one another. And the apple does not far, fall, fall far from the tree. It's the same way today with God's people, you all. You're still killing one another in the spirit, in the flesh. Your career, your dreams, your goals, your aspirations. Whatever it is you set out, whatever your destiny is, whatever God called you to be. There's other black people. There's other Christians. There's other faiths. There's the conscious community. There's, you know, Hebrew Israelites in New York City causing division. Everywhere you look is to divide and conquer so you don't stand as a nation and as a people. Guys, begin to hear what that said the Lord, okay? I am going to go ahead and enjoy the rest of my coffee. Let this music run out. Get prepared for tomorrow's read, which is episode 41. All right, yay! We are making a difference over here, guys. Whether it looks like it on YouTube, on social media land, I know in the eyes of God, I know if you have a willing and obedient heart, you'll eat the good of the land. That means God shall supply all your needs according to your riches in His Son, Christ Jesus, and His glory. We have to remember Philippians 4 and 13. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, right? And remember, in our weakness, his strength is made perfect. So every day I get up feeling weak, like I don't want to do the read, like nobody is listening, like nobody is paying attention to Religion Week TV. I know in my weakness. His strength is made perfect. I know when I come before the masses as a lowly handmaid, he will raise me up with a new standard. 
This is Religion Wink TV, and my spiritual ears stay. Shalom, people. Have a blessed and wonderful day. Thank you. Oh, wow. We right at 30 minutes, y'all. Praise God in his holy name.